let's get scientific for a second. Because when we're talking about fasting, there is so much nonsense out there right now. As fasting gains popularity, we're seeing a lot more just random people starting to become self-proclaimed experts in the world. And I've been talking about fasting for years, so this is definitely an area that's not really Greek to me. No pun intended, because what I'm about to talk about is something called autophagy. And autophagy comes from Greek, ultimately meaning self-eating. So what I want to talk about in this video is how fasting and the process of autophagy help cells actually consume their own waste and utilize it for a very powerful source of energy. But I'm not just talking about fasting in this video. I want to do a deep dive in how the cells actually work and how autophagy is actually measured. So first off, let me give you a very general breakdown of autophagy before I get into sort of the cellular makeup. Autophagy is simply this. Cells are functioning with the survival of the fittest, okay, much like humanity. A cell is going to consume weak portions of the body. It's going to consume weak parts of itself to ultimately make it stronger. I want you to think of it just literally like survival of the fittest. Those that are strong will consume those that are weak, and it's a natural selection. It's a natural process to make the world stronger and make the world more efficient. Well, as our bodies are adapting and evolving even more and more, our cells are becoming capable of consuming waste or consuming functional materials that don't really have much of a function anymore to ultimately better themselves. It's kind of a selfish thing, but it actually makes a lot of sense as we get down to it. So let's talk about what is going on in the body. You see, your cells naturally degrade things that aren't going to be utilized anymore anyway. This isn't autophagy. This is a natural degradation. You see, we have these things inside of a cell called a lysosome. And a lysosome contains lots of different enzymes that ultimately break down all kinds of different things into waste. I want you to think of the lysosome as sort of the colon of the cell. It's functional, it's important, but we're not ultimately reabsorbing a lot of energy from the colon. You see, the colon continues to break things down and it passes things through as waste in our human body. Well, the lysosome is sort of the same way. It continues to break things down, sometimes gives a little bit of energy, but for the most part, it's just breaking down and further degrading proteins and other things that aren't used anymore, like organelles. Okay? But what ends up happening with autophagy is slightly different. You see, autophagy is actually happening because we have an increase in what are called autophagosomes. Okay? Autophagosomes are vesicles that travel throughout our cell that scavenge and eat these portions of the cell and proteins that are totally useless. This way, it catches them before they ever end up in the lysosome. If they end up in the lysosome, they end up just being ultimately utilized and excreted in a different way. But if these autophagosomes increase, then it allows the cell to be able to use them for energy. So these autophagosomes are basically like soldiers that run throughout the cell trying to find proteins that are starting to get weak and it laser targets them and it says, you're starting to get weak, I'm gonna take you and I'm gonna eat you right now. So this happens naturally, but there's some instances where autophagy increases, where we have more of those soldiers and more of those autophagosomes running around the cell. The more of those autophagosomes that are running around the cell, the more of the cellular recycling that we have going on. Now I want you to envision this. When we're young, our cells are vibrant, our cells are working efficiently, and we're multiplying cells like crazy. But as we start to get older, our cells aren't multiplying quite as much until we eventually die, and we're eventually not multiplying cells anymore. So what happens is because we're starting to lose cells, we do need to make sure that our cells become a lot more efficient. So although autophagy doesn't create more cells, and it doesn't stop us from losing cells, it does make the stronger cells even stronger. So as the weaker cells continue to die, the stronger cells begin to increase in autophagy and get stronger. And it's up to us with our diet and with our exercise to ultimately do the right things to increase that autophagy so that those cells can be stronger and we can live longer and feel more youthful. That's why people that fast a lot end up looking a lot younger than they actually are, simply because the cells that are operating in their body, even at an older age, have gone through a lot of autophagy processes to ultimately create very vibrant, strong, efficient cells that operate very cleanly. So in this case, let's look at a study. The study that is really, really interesting when it starts to break down autophagy and fasting. So this study took a look at measuring autophagosomes. Remember, the vesicles that go around throughout a cell eating the wasted particles or the slowly starting to degrade particles, okay? 
Now, it's really easy to measure autophagy because your level of autophagy simply increases when your level of autophagosomes are up. So it's actually very easy to measure. They just measure the level of autophagosomes. Well, what this study found was that after just 24 hours of fasting, autophagosomes increased by 300% in the cells. 300%. And then after another 24 hours, they increased another 30%. So 300 to 330% increase in the cellular recycling that's happening inside your body, simply by not consuming food for a short period of time. This goes to show that we can really get our bodies to get into this recycling mode, and we can get them to actually increase the level of autophagosomes that go around and consume proteins and wasted particles. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. If we have an upregulation of autophagy that's occurring in the brain, we have a high level of neuroprotection that's occurring. What does that mean? That means that this autophagy is causing the cells in our brain to become more powerful, therefore protecting us from Alzheimer's, protecting us from dementia, and potentially even protecting us from a lot of different cancers. Okay, if we have a downregulation of autophagy, meaning we have less autophagosomes going on in the brain cells, we end up having an influx of disease, an influx of neurodegenerative diseases. Again, we're talking about things like depression. We're even talking about Alzheimer's and dementia again. All these things are now being linked with the cell's ability to recycle. And we can simply fix this if we just listen to our bodies and restrict our calories from time to time. The more calories that we're constantly putting in, the more our bodies have to clean up and the more autophagosomes we would ultimately need to counteract that. I'm not saying that you completely starve yourself or you go on a seven day fast all the time, but if you implement little periods of fasting now and then, you can have a huge effect. Now let's talk about fat loss and autophagy because this is where it's really cool. If we have an upregulation of autophagosomes in the liver, we actually increase what's called lipolysis. Lipolysis is the utilization of fats and fat burning. Lipolysis is just a fancy way of saying burning fat. So we basically are encouraging the liver to get more efficient at burning fat simply because we have an upregulation of autophagy and the cells are getting rid of the waste. It's like getting rid of all the garbage in the trunk of your car so that your car can go faster. It's pretty darn awesome. Now, if we have a downregulation in the liver, we end up accumulating toxins within the body, we end up not having as much glutathione, which ultimately allows us to detox, and we end up slowing down the fat burning effect. So again, it's not to say that you need to fast every single day. But autophagy is this unique process, and there are a multitude of other ways that we can increase autophagy, and I'll talk about them in some other videos. But in this case, I wanted to give you the basic cellular breakdown. And to surmise, it's simple. We don't want everything to go into the lysosome of the cell. We want these autophagosomes to travel around the cell as much as possible, and we want as many of them as possible so that we can ultimately clean up the waste and have the cell operate cleanly. So this is my opinion on why you might want to give fasting a try more so than just burning fat, more so than boosting your cognitive function. It's more about living a long, healthy life so that you can do what you love for as long as you possibly can. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos, you know where to put them and you know what to do in the comment section. I'll see you soon.